Okay, great. Well, thank you everyone for joining us. Welcome on this inauguration day. As a residential real estate agent, I'm hearing a lot of folks are scrambling to figure out how Prop 19 affects their property investments as the February 15th deadline approaches. And my goal today is to give you an overview of how this new proposition can work as a property tax shelter for several individuals, as well as provide some information on implications that may be less ideal for anyone who inherits property in the future. Before we begin, I have a few housekeeping items. First of all, if you have any questions during the call, please type them in the chat box and we'll do our best to address them at the end. Secondly, a quick caveat, although we have done our best to educate ourselves on this topic in order to give you the latest information, please note that this is a new law that's just going into effect and we'll see changes in how it's interpreted unfold as the law is put into action. So with this in mind, I've asked a few of my esteemed colleagues to, to aid in the conversation and I'd like to introduce our panel. First, we have Kay Walker, a state planning attorney. Kay's focus is on helping people navigate through the process of planning for the many uncertainties of the future. She's here today because she believes that education is the basis of making good decisions, and we're so happy that you're here. Uh, then we have Bob Davis with NAI, NAI Capital. Bob specializes in commercial real estate investment and owner user sales with over three decades of experience. Hi, Bob. Good morning, everyone. Next, Jim Valle, certified public accountant and divorce mediator joins us. Jim has accumulated over 30 years senior executive level experience in his CPA practice. His goal is to create wealth for his clients by leveraging his vast industry experience in strategy and operations with his firm's solid foundation of tax, accounting, and financial planning. Hi, Jim. Good morning. And I am Dawn Nicolason, residential realtor with the L3 Real Estate. I specialize in working with trusts, investors, seniors, relocations, first time home buyers, and more. And my goal is to turn each client into a raving fan by delivering expert communication and negotiation while helping you achieve your real estate goals. So let's start with a little history about property taxes in California. First voted on in 1986, Proposition 60 allowed homeowners over the age of 55 to transfer their property tax base within the same county. Proposition 90 extended that by allowing for the transfers of a base year value from one county to another county in California, as long as they were reciprocal. <clears throat> Proposition 19 will go on to expand that further to counties throughout the state as of April 1st. So great news for those who are looking to move who may have otherwise been hesitant because of fear of losing the reduced property taxes that so many enjoy. So for example, before Prop 19, if Mrs. Troy brought, bought a home in 1980 for $200,000 and the property was now worth 1 million, Mrs. Troy may have resisted selling even if the house was too large and the stairs were too steep. To sell and downsize to a smaller home worth maybe 500,000, unless she moved to a county with reciprocity and could transfer her property tax basis, Mrs. Troy would wind up paying more than twice the property taxes that she was paying, and she'd be taxed on the $500,000 tax base rather than the $200,000 base in her current home. Under Prop 19, Mrs. Troy is now free to sell her home and buy another home valued at 1 million or less and have her same tax base, 200,000, anywhere in California. And not only will those 55 and over be able to transfer their property tax base, but so will anyone affected by California wildfires or natural disasters where they've lost more than 50% of their home, as well as those who are severely disabled. So this is adding a great deal of flexibility for those who may have been unable to move otherwise because of the potential increase in property tax that they would face. You can now move up to three times throughout the state to a home that is of equal or lesser value and take your property tax base with you. The area we wanna get into in a little more detail is what happens to your property taxes under this new law when you transfer title via inheritance. This is the biggest change that I think people are gonna be surprised by. So prior to Prop 19's passage, parents could transfer a primary residence to children without any new fair market assessment, regardless of how the children chose to use the real property. A primary residence is defined by the US, or excuse me, the IRS in three ways. One, it's where you spend the most time. 
Uh, two, it's your legal address listed for tax returns in the post office, your driver's license. And three, it's the home nearest where you work or bank. So effectively, this used to allow children to avail themselves of the same property tax basis that their parents enjoyed. Additionally, any secondary property, such as a vacation home, rental property, or commercial property could be transferred with up to 1 million of the assessed value being exempt from the increase in property taxes. Again, regardless of how it was used by the children. However, beginning February 16th, children who inherit real property from their parents will have to factor in increased property taxes in the decision to keep or sell their property. If a child chooses to keep the real property and use it as the child's primary residence, then up to 1 million of the reassessed value will be excluded from the new property tax basis. Before, primary residences could be transferred with no cap. So if the child chooses to keep the property as a second home, vacation home, or rental property, basically anything other than a primary residence, there's no longer a one, any exclusion. There's no $1 million exclusion, and the child will face a significant increase in property taxes. So for example, if parents purchased a rental property in 1940 for $50,000, and the value of the rental property is more than $1 million when it's transferred to a child after February 16th, the parent's tax basis does not pass to the child. The child will now have to pay property taxes based on the assessed fair market value, which will significantly affect the child's decision to keep or sell the property. For example, assume Ted and Eleanor Smith have lived in their quaint Laguna Beach home since they bought it in the early 1970s. Their tax base, a mere $80,000, but the home is valued at 2 million, a common story that we hear. Prior to Prop 19, when Ted and Eleanor passed on, they could have left their home to their son, Ben, who could have moved in or kept the property and rented it out. Either way, he'd pay only what his parents paid in property taxes and with a stepped up income tax base at the $2 million value. So even if he sold the property, he'd pay no income tax. Under Prop 19's new rules, if Ben moves into the home and files the homeowner's property tax exemption within one year, he'll be able to exclude the $80,000 plus $1 million from incre increased property tax assessments, but the remaining $920,000 will be taxed at the regular property tax base. So this would result in roughly $9,200 a year more than his parents were paying in property taxes. If Ben does not move into the home, the property will be assessed at the full $2 million value with the property tax bill then exceeding $20,000 a year. So this could be a significant increase in unexpected expenses for many who inherit property. Now the same is true for a grandchild inheriting a property from a grandparent, except the parents also have to be deceased. You can't skip a generation. Prop 19, from what we understand, is not retroactive and will not apply to any property until it is transferred or deemed transferred after February 15th. With that being said, there are several implications for anyone who has rental or commercial property as they plan their estates. So uh, Bob, what I'm hearing is that previously rental and commercial properties were protected under the property tax base exclusion and now they're not. How do you think this will affect investor strategy and planning? Don, I, I think anyone that has a uh, highly appreciated uh, commercial property that depends on the, uh, the cash flow from those properties needs to uh, consider their alternatives. Uh, the issues here are similar to the issues in Proposition 15, which was not passed uh, this last year. Uh, industrial and retail property owners typically lease their property with triple net leases, which means they can pass through all operating expenses, including property tax. So they legally have the ability to pass through uh, any increase in the property tax. But the, the issue is um, if they've held the property for a long time, these could be significant uh, pass through amounts. And for owners uh, of properties with uh, small tenants, uh, mom and pops, if you will, you know, they may or may not have the ability to pay the, the increases. Uh, with, with office uh, properties, it's even uh, more of a, uh, problematic because office buildings are typically leased with full service gross leases, which means in the first year of the lease, the operating expenses are included in the base rent. 
uh, which establishes a base year for operating expenses. These leases typically are in the three to five year lease term. And so during that period, the property owners have the ability to pass through any incremental increase in property tax, which again could be uh, very large numbers. Um, and they may or may not uh, be able to collect those from, from the tenants, but the, they legally have the ability to do that. But uh, unfortunately for, for uh, office building owners with these types of leases, once the initial lease term is, is uh, expired, the base year is reset to the new uh, lease term. And, and as a result, any ability to pass through the increases is gone forever. And for all these properties, um, you know, the market rent is the market rent. And, and uh, what this means for the majority of the, these owners is that at the end of the day, they will be putting far less money in their pockets than they would have before Prop 19. Uh, what I would, would say to all property owners uh, that are in this situation is that they should consult with their heirs, financial and tax advisors to review you know, their goals long term and what makes sense and, and what can be very complicated um, tax and estate planning issues. Makes sense. Thank you. Um, Kay, from an estate planning perspective, what can individuals do to prepare their families and, and potentially protect their investments? Thank you, Don. Uh, I agree with Bob. The most important thing to do presently is to discuss with your children whether they want to sell the property when you pass away or keep it long term. If the decision would be to sell, there's really no need to make any changes because the major benefit to children inheriting upon the death of their parents is a step up in value basis on the property. This huge tax benefits uh, lets the heirs avoid tax on the capital gains that occur during their owner's lifetime. However, if the children would be retaining the residence, they must also continue to live in the home as the transferee. So the question then becomes which child will live in the home to get the carryover tax basis. And if there are more than uh, one, if there's more than one child, who's going to live there and how many are actually going to be required by law? We're not sure about that yet. Those are still questions to be answered. But if the property is going to be retained as a rental, a vacation home, or otherwise, then some attorneys are suggesting an irrevocable trust for children might be a good option. Then in the simplest case where parents set up a transfer of property into an irrevocable trust and the first beneficiary is a child uh, because you can't revoke it, it's a change of ownership at the moment of the execution. So if this is done before February 15th, when the change occurs, then uh, this might be a really good alternative. Prop 19 won't affect people who own property in a corporation or an LLC or other legal entity. So that is also a possible solution because they play by totally different rules. So there is some speculation that this proposition might be unconstitutional. Uh, there's so many moving parts and that there may be some legal action in the future that might uh, make some changes. But nonetheless, the deadlines are fast approaching. And as of now, we are preparing for those changes and trying to get the word out to as many people as possible before it's too late. As every case is unique, we uh, suggest that you, you know, find out some uh, legal advice. This is not necessarily legal advice here because uh, you need to talk to your professional and rather than sharing information we have currently. Uh, if you have any specific questions, once again, uh, contact your professional and get some more information regarding your specific case. Everybody's situation is so different. So that's absolutely. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Jim, what are some financial implications that homeowners and investors should consider when planning their investment strategy and income tax strategy for themselves and their heirs? Oh, thanks for asking, Don. And I think. The most important thing to realize is that this is a new tax law. 
for property tax. And it's been, um, there are a number of professionals out there today that are introducing specific strategies to retain the assessor's value for property tax um, purposes. You know, to, to save the 1% additional tax on the additional assessment. Now the issue becomes there are so many variables to consider, whether it be advice from your realtors. You know, what is the market value today? What do we expect it to be in the future? What, what are the returns on investments? Uh, we also want to take a look at you know, what, are the, what are the capabilities of the heirs? Can they, can they even operate this, this uh, commercial property? Can they manage it? Can they manage it effectively? Are they going to live in the home after the, after the um, after the renters are deceased. So one of the things, I'll give you an example, a, a quick example. Let's assume you have a home where it's purchased, purchased in 1960s for $50,000, has an assessed value of 150,000. Fair market value is currently 1.15 million. So you can do, you can do many things as you as you're talk to some of your advisors to try to preserve that $150,000 base, the assessor's base and not being reassessed at the $1.1 million. But take a look at that strategy. To save that 1%, which is essentially $10,000 a year, some of these strategies will result in you not getting the step up in the basis. If you forego that step up in basis, you're going to be paying, let's, let's assume you, you sell immediately, you're going to be paying an additional $300,000 in income taxes. You know, that's assuming a 50% capital gains rate in uh, about a 12.5% um, California rate. So you're going to have to hold on to that property quite a while, 30 years before you're going to get, and, and ignoring the time value of money, 30 years before your strategy to save your um, property taxes really pays off. So it's not just a matter of uh, your it's not just a matter of saving the 1%, it's looking at your entire plan and see how that fits within uh, your strategy. So again, the most important thing is we can't give you an all-encompassing solution. It truly, as, as Bob, Kay, and Don have said, truly depends on your own situation and then look to the different tools you have available to maximize your value on your strategy. So hope that answers it. Thanks, Tom. Okay. Thank you, Jim. That gives us a lot to think about. Um, so let's go ahead and open it up for questions at this point. If you do have any questions, feel free to add it to the chat. Um, we did receive a few questions early on. Um, the first question is, my current property tax is around 8,000. If I sell my house in April for 2 million and purchase a small condo for 500,000, then a year in a year or two, sell the five hundred thousand dollar condo and buy a home around one point two million. What would my property tax be on the one point two million dollar home, and can I carry my current property tax for the one point two million dollar home? Um, Jim, since you're the numbers guy, do you want to address that? <laughs> oh, you're on mute. There you go. I should have written that down, but I think you said it's a $2 million value. They stepped down to 500,000. Right. Uh, and their, and um, their new tax base, uh, we're, we're only talking uh, property tax, new property tax base, mm -hmm. uh, through my memory is about 500,000. Now they go, now they buy into a $1.5 million home. So yes, their right? property tax is eight thousand dollars. So probably a, a eight hundred thousand thousand dollar home. So then, so then they're selling it for two million, and then they want to purchase the condo for five hundred thousand, and then sell that since you can move three times and bring your property mm -hmm. tax base. And then they want to buy a one point two million dollar home. So what are the repercussions of that? So as soon as they step down, their assessor's the assessor value is going to be the lower of the eight hundred thousand dollar valuation or the five hundred thousand dollar valuation, correct? Their assessor's value. Right. So they're going to keep the five hundred. Now they when they step up to a one point five, okay, they're going to get since they can do it, they're going to keep the five hundred thousand dollar tax base. 
right? That means I did that on the fly. Yeah. Because they're they step down, they have a five hundred thousand dollar tax base. Now they're getting to one point five. They've essentially lost three hundred thousand dollars to shelter. Right. Yeah, so it'd probably be better to hold on. And I think you have two years to transfer that tax base. So sell the $2 million home, hold on two years, and then buy the 1.2. Right, because if they went immediately to the 1.5 million and they have an $800,000 tax base, they'd still be at the $800,000 tax base at the 1.5 mm -hmm. versus the 500. Right. <clears throat> okay. And then another question came in, um, let's see, with Prop 19, do you get to keep the step up in, val in validation upon trust transfers? Kay, what do you think about that? Uh, Prop 19 is not going to affect a trust transfer if it's strictly, you know, parent passes away, the property's in the trust, and it's being given to the child, then child is going to get the step up in value, notwithstanding even Proposition 19. It's just a, an inheritance to the next generation. So they should definitely get the step up in value. Okay. As far as we know, it's not going away yet. <laughs> and of course, we know this is the new administration. There will be new tax laws coming to play. So we can only talk about what we know as of today. Um, did any other questions come across that you all saw? No, I haven't seen any new questions, Don. But uh, just to add on to your last comment, yeah, uh, one of the many uh, proposed tax changes of the new administration is to eliminate the step up in basis. And so um, I would advise everyone to uh, stay tuned uh, because there are potentially, uh, you know, enormous changes that, that could be uh, on the on the horizon here that would, would impact their their ownership of, of both residential and commercial rental properties. It's a very good point, Bob. Right now we're in a, as a new change of administration, a ton of new proposed tax changes, and uh, you know if we had a crystal ball, we'd know how to plan. But unfortunately, just as you said, we've got to monitor the winds and see what's happening in Congress, um, so that we can at least get ahead of the game. And then I wanted to add one last point is that you know, this on Prop 19, although it, you know, in terms of income taxes, like it, it's not impacted, but what happens in a divorce situation, in a divorce if you're over 55, you want to leverage this, which, which spouse gets that, that's a point of negotiation. Um, and then also not even if you're 55, if you're a victim of a wildfire, but you're also in the middle of a divorce, what happens to that, that uh, retention of that assessor's value? Where does that go? These are all critical and uh, you know, critical decisions that need to be made in the wake of Prop 19. We did get one new question, uh, which perhaps uh, Jim, you can can answer. Or um, given the new law, are other investments treated more favorably from a tax perspective? Well, investments are actually, you know, we, the way we look at investments, whether it's real estate, whether it's uh, investment in emerging companies, all other types of investments, they all have their own individual risks. So if you say all things being equal, all, all risks being equal, are there other uh, investments treated more favorably from a tax perspective? And I'm assuming that you're referring to uh, real estate in general real estate in general still retains at this point, the tax-free exchange. Um, however, you know, if you're going into an opportunity zone or others, you, you do have the deferral, whatever type of asset it is, but then you're bounded by the opportunity zone. So again, uh, I, I can't propose one investment over another. Uh, you have to look at the individual risk factors and opportunities within, that, uh, within those uh, investments. And I will add to that, uh, based upon uh, Dr. Peter Litteman's uh, recent podcast, he's a foremost commercial real estate uh, economist, and he has projected that, that all assets, um, including residential and commercial real estate, will continue to appreciate in value 
In, in fact, there may even be some uh, cap rate compression, which uh, for uh, real estate, it further inflates the value. In, in other words, people um, are chasing returns and they're willing to accept a lower return, which, which in turn pushes up the value of the asset. Uh, for the next five to 10 years. And, and this is due to the enormous amount of stimulus that has been pumped into the economy. So assets in general are going to, you know, re remain a, a favorable investment and real estate, is certainly in California and Southern California in particular, has done extremely well uh, over the past few decades. That's good news for homeowners that are looking to move and especially those over 55, they can take their tax base with them for the next two or three moves if they're so inclined. So good news. With interest rates being so low, it's really favorable um, even to take out money if you need to. Looks like and we, got we got another question here uh, on the deadline for the property transfer to be exempt from the increased tax base. Is it February 14th? February 15th. So as of February 16th, the new law goes into effect. However, for um, those 55 and over um, and severely disabled and anyone affected by wildfires, et cetera, um, that actually portion goes into effect April 1st. Yes. So they just had to make it a little confusing for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Thank you so much for your time today to my panel. Thank you for being here. Um, as always, as we mentioned, it's recommended that you seek counsel from a professional before acting on any of the um, advice we, we mentioned today. Every situation is different and you should have someone review your particular needs. But while this might not affect you today, it will be something your heirs will deal with. Or if you've inherited property recently, you may wish to seek counsel to ensure the vesting is set up properly so it won't trigger an action after the deadline. Um, for any property that is inherited as of February 16th, as I just said, the county will reassess the property values and will increase the property taxes your heirs pay on those properties. Um, thank you so much for attending. I will uh, set up on the screen a um, contact sheet. Feel free to reach out to any of our panelists today. We'd love to answer your questions. And a recording of this presentation will be made available to all registrants. So thank you and have a lovely day. Thank you. Bye. It was a pleasure. Bye-bye.